Hey everyone, this is Nick DeRobertis teaching you financial modeling. Today, we're going to be talking about calculating a terminal value. This is part of our lecture series on free cash flow estimation and forecasting, which is part of a broader goal to build out the full discounted cash flow valuation of a stock. So this is the last uh, video in the lecture series uh, where after this video, we'll have everything that we need to be able to build the full DCF model. So the last part that we haven't talked about is, well, now we've forecasted all these uh, future free cash flows. Um, and from the previous lecture series, we've, we've got the WAC as well. Um, and we also know how to convert between uh, enterprise value and equity value and what those concepts mean. So the last thing is just how do we take these free cash flows and the WAC um, and get to an enterprise value? So uh, as we mentioned at the beginning of the WAC lecture series, um, we can value any financial asset, any asset that pays cash flows by taking the present value of future cash flows. So in the DCF model, for the company, we have these free cash flows as the cash flows, and the discount rate is going to be the WAC that we already calculated. Um, and we um, can forecast out into the future for some number of years, but um, forecasts get less and less accurate the further that you go into the future. And so you really should be uh, suspicious of any forecast which is going out further than five years for financial data. I mean, even, even five years, um, unless it's a very stable company, it's, it's fairly unlikely you'll be anywhere close to the, the actual numbers by five years. Um, so what about after five years? Uh, if even five years is suspect, what about 15, 20 years in the future? The company's still around, they're still earning free cash flows that should be factored into the valuation. So how do we account for that when we know that our forecasts are not going to have any reasonable degree of accuracy? What we can do is calculate a terminal value for the company. And that terminal value is saying at the end of our forecast period, how much could we sell the company for? Um, Basically, it's, it's the enterprise value of the company at the end of the forecast period. And we can use that instead of having to predict cash flows all the way out into infinity. Um, instead, we can have a forecast period where we actually have the forecasted values. And then at the end of that, we have the terminal value in order to say, um, well, if we just sold the company, then uh, how much would we get? And if we sell the company, then that's uh, at that point reflective of the present value of all further future free cash flows. So that the free cash flows starting from year six in this example and going out into infinity, all of that is brought into the terminal value as present value at year five. And then we have those five years of free cash flows along with this terminal value, which represents the entire future. And that allows us to have the entire future in our present value calculation. So now how do we get that terminal value? Because you just heard me mention that, okay, this is an enterprise value at the end of the forecast period but we're getting this terminal value in order to try to calculate the current enterprise value. So then in order to get the terminal value, don't we then need an even later enterprise value, like a, a terminal value of that terminal values time period? And then in order to get that one, we've got to do the same thing. Um, and so if we try to go with the same approach, we would end up with this kind of infinitely nested DCF model and you would never have a solution um, for your ultimate stock price. Um, also, we know that basically any forecast 
which are going out beyond this five-year period are just going to be junk anyway, so why bother even trying to go through that process even if it was solvable? So we've got to have a different approach to get the terminal value. And there are two approaches which are commonly used, and those are classified into exit multiple approaches and the perpetuity growth method. So we'll look at both methods. And the difference is that the exit multiple approach, the concept there is, well, let's take some valuation ratio uh, from the current data, um, you know, price times earnings or something like that, and then take our future forecasted financials, apply that same current valuation ratio to the future financials, and that will get us our future valuation or the terminal value. Whereas the perpetuity growth method um, says, well, let's take the last free cash flow and apply a growth rate on it and say they're just going to grow um, at a constant rate after the forecast period and then take the present value of that. So looking more um, specifically at the exit multiple approach, so there are some common valuation ratios that are used for this. Um, so it, you do have to have some kind of uh, price component in it in order to uh, use this approach. That can be either directly the price or it can be the enterprise value. Um, and so we have four common ones here based off the enterprise value, enterprise value to EBIT, to EBITDA, um, to sales, uh, to free cash flows. Um, and then we also have this uh, one common one, which is based off the price, the price to earnings ratio. Um, so again, basic idea, take the current uh, ratio, forecast the financials, apply the current ratio to the future financials to get the future valuation. Um, and you're going to get different results depending on which ratio that you use. So it's very common um, for people to not just report one stock price from a DCF model, um, but to give a stock price range based on the different approaches for the terminal value. Um, so people will usually look at multiple different ratios as well as the perpetuity growth method and establish a valuation range based upon that. So for these enterprise value based ratios, you're going to um, take the um, ratio and you're going to take the future um, forecasted um, value, whatever uh, value is there in the ratio. Let's say we're working with uh, EV to EBIT. Um, so you're going to take your EV to EBIT ratio, which you have from the current data, and you're going to multiply that by your last forecasted period's EBIT, and that will get you the um, enterprise value uh, for the final period. And then for the um, price to earnings, then you need to go through a similar approach, take the current ratio, multiply it by the um, final forecasted period net income, and that will get you, um, instead of an enterprise value, it will get an equity value. Um, and so then you just need to add that final period's uh, forecasted debt onto that and subtract the cash, and that's gonna get you that final period enterprise value, which you can use as the terminal value. And looking at the um, perpetuity growth method, so the perpetuity growth method uh, actually uses the same math as the dividend discount model, because conceptually what we're doing in both models is the same. Uh, in the dividend uh, discount, discount model, we say that the dividends are going to grow at a constant rate. Same here, we're going to say that the free cash flows are going to grow at a constant rate. And in both cases, we're trying to find the present value. Um, 
So the structure of the formula looks just like the structure of the dividend discount formula, where there we have the last period of dividend times one plus the growth rate over the rate of return on the stock minus the growth rate. Here it's the same thing, just instead of the dividend, we have the free cash flow. And instead of the uh, rate of return on the stock, we have the weighted average cost of capital. So you do that, and you do that with your final uh, final period of uh, free cash flow, and that will get you the terminal value. Um, now you do have to pick a growth rate, which is going to go into that. Um, and the valuation is extremely sensitive to the choice of that growth rate. So whenever you use the perpetuity growth method, it is uh, even standard to do at least a sensitivity analysis on it uh, because that assumption matters so much for the final stock price. Uh, people want to see, well, what does the stock price look with a range of different uh, terminal growth rates? And um, it would be a good idea to do a Monte Carlo simulation as well to understand uh, in more detail how much uh, the stock price is going to move around based upon your uh, assessment of the standard deviation of the growth rate. And if you want to know what to plug in, um, so 2 3% are, you know, maybe up to 4 like kind of 2 to 4% is the typical range here. Um, you shouldn't have it be really much more than GDP at all, uh, because this is supposed to be a growth rate, which is going to last forever. Um, and so if a company grew faster than the overall economy forever, it would at some point become actually much, much, much larger than everything else in the economy such that this company would become the entire economy. So you can't just throw a 10% terminal growth rate in there. That makes absolutely no sense. That would say, you know, maybe in 20, 30, 40 years that this company would be the entire economy, which is probably not um, what you're trying to model. So because this is uh, such a long-term growth rate, uh, you need to be fairly conservative here even if the last few years of growth have been 7 10%, you need to pick a much lower rate because this is supposed to last indefinitely. Um, so now we have the terminal value, we have the free cash flows, we have the WAC. So what do we do to wrap up the DCF model? Um, so we have to use those free cash flows in conjunction with the terminal value in order to uh, get the current enterprise value. So um, the terminal value is going to happen during the final forecast period. So if you're forecasting out of five years, then your year five uh, free, the year five cash flow that you're gonna use in the present value calculation is your original free cash flow for that year plus the terminal value. So you'll have, you know, all the preceding years in the five year example, you have years one, two, three, four, um, with their estimated free cash flow value. And then you'll have year five with that free cash flow value plus the terminal value. And then you're going to take the net present value of all of that using the WAC as the discount rate. Um, so that will yield you the current enterprise value. And then uh, we talked at the beginning of the prior lecture series on the WAC about how we can take an enterprise value and convert it into an equity value and convert that into a stock price, which is ultimately what we want to get out of the DCF model. So with that, then we have everything that we need in order to do the entire DCF model. Um, so then in order just to uh, test understanding of this terminal value material, we have a lab exercise on that as well. Um, so here you have um, four different ratios that you wanna use with the exit multiple approach. And then you also wanna use the perpetuity growth method. 
Um, and the numbers are basically given to you for all these things. Um, so you have you know, constant free cash flow for the next five years. Uh, you have the values of all the ratios. Uh, you have these, uh, these values, which you need to use for the exit multiple approach for the final forecasted period. You have uh, the current um, financial statement items that you uh, will use to get to a stock price. Um, and shares outstanding also for the stock price WAC for taking the present value terminal growth rate for the perpetuity growth method. Um, and ultimately, what you want to get is stock prices. So you should have five different stock prices coming out of this, one corresponding to each ratio and one corresponding to the perpetuity growth method. And uh, all those answers are there provided for you to ensure that um, you can get through this all appropriately. So that wraps up our um, dual lecture series related to the discounted cash flow valuation of the stock which is the capstone model here in the basic financial modeling class. Um, so I hope everyone enjoyed uh, learning about this and uh, we'll come back in the next lecture series to kind of give a roadmap on what else we can learn in this financial modeling space. So we'll start to look at more advanced topics and do just a very uh, brief rush on each topic area to discuss what direction you can go in for future learning. So thanks for listening and see you next time.